let's get some more practice assigning R or S configuration. Now we can look at this molecule and pick out just one chirality center. Again, it, it has the wedge and dash on it. It won't always have a wedge and dash, but if we want to assign our R or S, we need to have that stereo or that three-dimensional information. This is not a chirality center. It's attached to two methyls. This is not a chirality center. Again, it's attached to two methyls. So let's look at the priorities here. I've got a hydrogen, a methyl. I'm going to call this a three-carbon group. It's an isopropyl. I'm going to call this a five-carbon group. Uh, it would be called isopentyl if you want to get technical, but we can just call it the five-carbon group. So I can assign some priorities straight off. I know that the hydrogen will be number four. The methyl is the shortest chain, and it's also attached to the least interesting group of three atoms, right? So every time you have a methyl versus other carbon chains, it's going to be the lowest priority. Now I need to decide between this carbon and this carbon, which is a higher priority. Uh, and if I make a list, the right carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. And we knew that, we could have predicted that because this is a CH2. This is a CH group. It's attached to two other carbons, so its list would be CCH. So I'm gonna look for the first point of difference here. And I'm always going to list my substituents in decreasing atomic number. So the first point of difference here is this carbon versus that H. So the highest priority group is going to be the isopropyl and then the uh, isopentyl. We could have predicted that with a little bit more experience assigning configuration. Typically, all else being equal, if you have a branch point closer to your chirality center, here's the branch point, it's right next to the chirality center, here's a branch point pretty far away, that branch point closer will give you the higher priority, even if there's only three carbons here versus five. So it's not always a longer chain. Um, if it's just straight chains, the longer chain will give you higher priority. But if you have branching, the, the closer branch will give you higher priority. And so now I can do some counting. I can count one, two, three. I can observe that the hydrogen is pointed towards me. So normally my count one, two, three is to the left. It would assign S. Normally that would be correct, but the, if the hydrogen is towards you instead of away from you, we need to reverse our assignment. So this is R. Remember I can do the double swap. So let's quickly do that and then we'll move on to another example. So if I wanna swap the uh, three and the four, let's see here. And then I want to swap again the 1 and the 3. I've come back to the original. And then counting 1, 2, 3, I also get R. So you can do the double swap. You can recognize that the hydrogen is simply in the uh, absolute, or sorry, the, the wrong position relative to you. It's to towards you instead of away from you. Uh, any technique you want as long as you get to R in this case. Let's look at this example, and I'm going to fill in the hydrogen. So hopefully you can pick out where the, um, the chirality center is, right? It's going to be the one bearing the OH. Again, most of the time it's pretty obvious, but not all the time. So I'm going to add an H there so that makes my life a little easier. So I have, I have this alkene attached on the left side. I've got a three carbon chain attached on the right side. I've got an OH and I've got an H. So the highest priority will be the oxygen versus carbon versus carbon versus H, and the lowest priority will be the H, of course, and then I need to decide between these two carbons, which one of these would be highest priority of the two. I'm going to make a list uh, of what they're attached to. My list has to have three things in it. So if I look at the alkene carbon, it's attached to a carbon and an H. But what's the third thing that's attached to it? Let's come back to that, just so I can show you what I mean by the third. With the right carbon is a CH2, so it's attached to the next carbon on the chain and the two H's that are right here that we don't draw. So that has three things on it. And in order to compare these two lists, I need three things. And so Con Engel Prelog, the three gentlemen who developed these rules, uh, developed another rule that says when you have a double bond to a carbon or to an oxygen or to anything, 
it counts as though you're attached to that element twice. So this carbon is attached to this carbon with a double bond. So that actually counts as attaching it to two carbons. So I'm going to add another carbon to my list. And you can see now I have my three attachments. And, and you can see which of these is higher priority, right? The carbon versus the hydrogen means that the left side is the higher priority. So that gets number two. The propyl group gets number three. My hydrogen is pointed away from me, so I don't need to do any manipulations. I can just count one, two, three. That gives me the clockwise rotation. So this is indeed the R configuration. So that's how we would uh, establish two carbon groups that are of similar length, um, but one has the, the double bond in it. And the triple bond would count the same way, except that it counts three times whatever it's attached to. Um, and so again, we can see that it's not just the longer chain that's always going to win, but it's the thing that has the more interesting stuff closer, uh, if that has some interesting things, like a functional group, a branch, or an alkene. Let's go on to a third example. So here we have a similar situation to what we just looked at, um, except that we have the branch point uh, on the rightmost um, substituent. So one and four, I'm going to make my list here. We know that that alkene is a CCH. Again, it counts the carbon uh, that's on the end of the alkene twice, and then it counts the hydrogen that's right here that I don't have drawn. Let's make a list for this carbon. That has a methyl group attached to it. It's got the three carbon chain attached to it, and it has a hydrogen. So in this case, I have the same list. So I need to go further on. And basically what we're going to do now, and let me put just dots here so I can figure out which list belongs to which carbon. Now, I'm going to make a list for each of the carbons that's in my original list. So I'm gonna have two more lists now. So this carbon, that's a methyl carbon, so that's just H, H, H. And then if I can get red here, I'll try to make this a little more color-coded for you. That carbon is a CH2 carbon, so it's a CHH list, right? So you got the purple list, which is on a methyl, H, H, H. You've got the red list, which is uh, a CH2, and so we have uh, CHH. So now let's get some green going on. Remember that this alkene carbon has counted twice. So both of the carbons right here come from this alkene carbon. So I'm gonna give that two green dots just to remind myself. And I'm gonna put a green arrow on both of these. Just So I'm gonna have the same list. That's what I'm getting at here. Um, so whatever the list is for this alkene carbon, it just counts twice. Uh, so it's attached to two hydrogens, of course. Right, there are two H's on the end here. Well, what's its third bonding partner? What do you think? There's only two H's attached here. I can't, I can't have an, I don't have a third atom to it that it's attached to. But since it's a part of a triple bond, we go back along that bond to give it the third bonding partner of this blue carbon here. So its list would be CHH. And this, since we're counting this one twice, we double that list to get another CHH. So where do you see the first point of difference? first point of difference here is the fact that there's no C in the purple list, right? There's a CHH here for this red carbon and two CHHs for basically counting this green carbon twice. There's no C right here. So that means this side is lower priority. This side is lower priority. So let's go ahead back to the blue numbers. This gets number two. This gets number three. Again, we can count one, two, three, just like that. This is still R, even though I've put a branch point right next to the stereo center. So here we see an example of how we might have to uh, treat a double bond, especially if we have to go further along the, uh, the substituent to come to the first point of difference. Uh, you end up making a couple of lists in this case. And it's possible that if this were CHH as well, we would make more lists for each of these carbons that would be in these secondary lists. So you can make quite a bit of lists. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind if you get to a point where you can't uh, tell the difference, say, between these two blue carbons here. You're going to have to keep going along the chain and coming to the first point of difference.